Welcome to Cosmic Disclosure. I'm your host, George Norrie, and I'm here with Emery Smith. What about medical devices of the future? Emery, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, George. You have good experience in medical technology. What are the medical devices of the future? The next evolution is most likely going to be an app in your iPhone. And the iPhone will be like a scanner. No. And it will also be like a CAT scan. So you can put it on, you know, your breast and you can zoom in, just like you zoom in on your pictures, all the way to the cellular level. This technology already exists. It's just a matter of Incredible. time before it comes out. Will it tell you your arteries are blocked? Go get some help right away? Right, it'll do things like this. It can scan your body, you know, 400 times better than a CAT scan. You can zoom in all the way into the cellular level and say, wow, look at these 10 cells. They're cancer cells, they're tumorigenic Jeez. cells push a button, send the frequency, and zap those, never happen now. So You mean we'll be curing ourselves? You, we'll be curing yourselves for sure in your back pocket now, with that phone. Hospitals, doctors, people who are making money, the pharmaceutical industry, do you think they want this to happen? A cheap little handheld device I that could attack the illnesses? <laughs> I can assure you they don't want anything out that fast. So it'll be a gradual display of, of the technology coming out. Maybe this thing will only be used to spot it, not cure it. And then you have to go in and get your, your therapy done for that, whatever the treatment is they want. So it'll be a very slow release of this type of technology. And my goal is to get this out to the world right now, within the next Absolutely. year. Absolutely. And it's, it's just a very dangerous thing. You're going up against these very large corporations that have their own militia and that will threaten you. And I've been threatened in the past many times, as you know, with the medical devices. So we have to incorporate these corporations for now, incorporate the government into ways of getting the technologies out in a safe way. Well, look what happened to Royal Rife and you know, devices like that. I mean, they chased this poor guy and hounded him until he died. Yeah, it's very tragic, and this is happening all over the world, even today, unfortunately, with brilliant scientists and inventors and engineers. You know, the thing is to get a structure built of an organization that can expose this stuff, you know, through clinical trials and sure. things like this, and do it the right way, because that's the protocol we're in. So we have to you know, follow these protocols and do it the right way so we don't step on feet and people, you know, are not killed. What are nanite technologies? Well, nanite technologies, on nano level, there's ways to make very small synthetic cells and robots that can go in the body. And a good example of, uh, of an archaic one is the camera that you swallow and it records the entire time Inside, going through your digestive system. So that was like one of the first things. But they have things that can go into the bloodstream and the same way, but on a very small level. All hooked into a computer? And all hooked up to a computer, and it runs through your whole bloodstream. It's made of an organic material, so it does break down over time. It dissolves, you it mean? It dissolves. So this is where it's kind of going. So they can get an accurate uh, depiction of you know what's going on in your body. The, the main thing is, we don't really need to do that because the technology exists right now in our compartmentalized projects where you lay on these tables and you, your, your body is scanned. A 3D holographic image is now projected above your body so the scientists can move it around, zoom in like I was talking about. And these three-dimensional holographic images are very, very... They're crystal clear. Crystal clear, just like I'm looking at you. But now it's a holographic image of your entire body cell by cell. So I can grab your body, move it here, open it up before I operate on you and see what's really going on. Can these little nanites be hacked by somebody who's sitting at another computer? Yes, anything to do uh, with nanites that are, uh, because they're electrical and they run off the body's own electrical system, believe it or not, it actually powers them. Anyone could hack into there and kill someone. You could be injected with these things and it could also be used for really bad stuff too. In, in projects, George, we were able to clone people and they have a residual memory locked into their DNA where these clones would remember who they were 
in another past life. And they life. look just like they're exactly, the body, yeah, right? They're exactly the same. Wow. But what's interesting is they retain, and this is the big study going on now, is how the heck are they growing, you know, these clones, even if they're artificially, you know, put in a woman and gestated that way, or if they're grown in a vat, how the heck do these clones remember who they were? Answer that question. So there's an energy signature in the DNA that they're trying to crack that is like a hard drive that never forgets about, you know, where it actually came from. Mm -hmm. So if it does get to become an adult or a teenager, these clones do remember and recall certain aspects of the life they had before. And sometimes this happens to people on planet Earth where they're having a recollection and think they were reincarnated. What's fueling this? What is pushing this kind of technology? I believe like China, you know, uh, just came out uh, publicly and they're growing humans because of the need for organs. And it doesn't need to happen that way because we have 3D printers right now that can print your, with your DNA, we can print your liver, we can print your heart, and then activate it, you know, send a charge through it and then put it into your body. These are healthy cells. These cells were grown with your DNA very quickly. Jeez. And this is all suppressed technology that's actually been around for quite some time. They're starting to grow 3D print bodies and activate them. They're having a lot of problems with it. It's not exactly perfected, but they're doing it. And it's being suppressed from us. When we have this te technology right down the road where we can print you a liver. The technologies that you worked on, what were they like? Well, they, they're kind of set up like an operating room. They're seamless. And everything is inside the walls or in the ceiling. Mm -hmm. So there's even, uh, if I'm operating and I don't have an assistant, you know, these robotic arms will come down from the ceiling and someone can actually be helping me from very far away. And this is now technology they're using now in open heart surgery, but you know, in the early 90s, they never that existed. You know? Exactly. And also, while working with different types of frequencies of DNA and ET bodies, you also had to use special instruments because some of our instruments and devices would, would actually destroy the tissues. So you had to be careful with the components that you were using, the different types of metals, the different types of plastics and things like this when you're taking samples and, and biopsies. The, the neat thing about the, the med lab that was in the programs was this amazing table that you could lay on. And it, like I said earlier, it'll scan your whole body and we could see you know, if there was any contaminants in you, if you had any tumors or anything like that. But the, the table itself could also, like the Rife machines, shoot frequencies in your body to realign you know, what needed to be fixed. So in the future, I do believe these tables will be in everyone's homes because you, you don't need to do anything. The, it can actually fix you, stop bleeding, enhance the uh, broken bone into healing within hours. You just lie on top of it? You just it lie on top thing. of it. And through um, energy and, and frequency, mm -hmm. it actually uh, heals you and cures you. These fiber optics drop down out of the ceiling for getting a sample out of the body. It, it actually is like an assistant that knows already what needs to be done. These tentacles will come down and firm up. They could be so hard that you could use it as a spear and punch through you. They can actually lift the body up and turn it for you, huh. these tentacles. Or if you want just an appendage out, it can support the appendage off of the table. Or if you need it closer to you because you know, of magnification problems, things like this. It's very, and it's all voice activated as well. And it's all, it's just intuitive. It already kind of knows, you know, that you're gonna be in this body, you're gonna need to see this part of the body, and it, it does it. And like I said, it's very strong. These fiber optic cables, I'll mm -hmm. call them, can lift the body up, turn it around, rotate it uh, back and forth, it also can project through these like little holographic uh, images on what you're working on. And it's overlaying on top of this an image of the bone, the tendons, the ligaments are all shown with light holographic on top of where I'm taking it. And it shows me exactly what biopsy to take from what part of the body. 
It's kind of like an AI, artificial intelligence. The programming of this stuff, you have to understand, is light years ahead of us, and it's reverse engineered. You have to understand the table will know what is wrong with you. Sure. The table will know what part of the body to fix. So the future with these devices, it's absolutely astounding. Oh, it's, it's amazing, because this is where it's going. If it's already here now in these compartmentalized projects, it's just a matter of time before we get it, hopefully sooner than later. How long do you have to lie on the table? It depends on what your problem is. You know, were you just in a car accident? Are you treating some ongoing cancer? You know, is it just, you know, you have a tension headache? So all these factors go into, you know, the treatment of how the table would like to, you know, fix you. I don't know the programming of it. I don't know the specifics. I don't even know how the frequencies work, but I have seen people on these tables getting cured and healed. And a lot of these things are also up on, on the space stations that are, that are up there right now. Will they ever enhance the power of telepathy and psychic abilities with technology? Well, right now they're doing that with supplements, as you know, you hear about oh, all yeah. these, these supplements. You know, these things, what they do is they allow the body to access different po points of the neural receptor sites so you can start using these parts of your uh, brain that you've never really used before. So you have this increased cognitive function. You have this increased remote viewing capabilities. You have this increased psychic abilities, mm -hmm. all of our patients are telling us. And it's all because of activating certain parts, whether it's through um, frequencies or supplements that contain frequencies. There's a study at Stanford University where they were able to work with the genome sequence and people were able to enhance their contact ability with extraterrestrials. I mean, it's truly bizarre. What can you tell us about something like this? Well, just as someone goes and meditates, you are changing your frequency and your genome sequence. You're getting activated, too, when you go out and do Close Encounter of the Fifth Kind mm -hmm. uh, protocols. You know, you're accepting this energy that's coming from either an extraterrestrial um, location or from space. So the thing is being aware that you are capable of almost anything and then focusing on that and allowing your body to be activated. You hear about these meditators going, well, I was activated. You know, activation of the genetic code is a very serious thing that's gonna be proven more with science like they just did with Stanford with this. Okay. So I completely agree with that. It was used in the projects a long time ago for the super soldier program and also for the remote viewers where they were doing this activation for the genetic code and it was working whatever they were doing. What is driving the technology, Emery? What is fueling it to make it grow so quickly these days? We are fueling it. The civilians of the world are fueling where it's going to go and how fast it's going to go there. Because we're the ones buying these products. We're the ones that are watching us. You know, that's why they, they hire all these amazing uh, people to, to go into Walmart and say, okay, use these colors. Put this uh, here on this show. Play this music. Play this music. So this is kind of a control factor because it's guiding us where they want us to go. But that's not where our hearts want us to go. Emery, we've been talking a lot about the medical technology that you specifically have been involved with. What else is out there? Well, there was a, a really interesting, uh, going back to the table again. You love this table. Oh, I love the table, but the table is just one aspect of the entire unit. Uh, and what that means is <clears throat> there's these fiber optic uh, cables that come out very small maybe less than a millimeter in diameter, mm -hmm. some up to three, depends on what they're doing. And they have the ability to come down to the body, attach to the body, scan the body, um, and they do it all with light. It's all photons. And it can actually shoot photons into your body um, at a very atomic level that I can't explain, I'm not a physicist, that allows the body to regenerate itself. And what that means is, if you can regenerate your body, you can kind of almost live forever, if you know well, what I mean. Will the body do that on its own? I mean, like a lizard grows a tail, will we ever be able to grow a finger with that kind of technology? Well, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. You can regrow limbs, or you can 3D print a, a limb. 
And these are the technologies I was exposed to while I was in there. Huh. Uh, the technologies out today, which is interesting, is like the fourth state of water. There's some sort of energetic uh, properties of this plasma water where we were able to grow back fingers just by soaking it in the water three times a day. Gosh. So this stuff is out there, but they can't talk about it, and they're not going to write white papers on it because it works too well. So I think light therapy is going to be the newest thing because there's a way to cure the body just by using different types of wavelengths of light. Like there's a, a, another device out there that was in the projects that just came out. And this was a IV catheter that, that's, that has a light on it. Many different colors of light. There's red, there's blue, there's green, I think. And you can stick this into your antecubital vein. And as the blood goes past this light, it activates the DNA. Okay, it activates things in the DNA to allow you to be more psychic, to allow you to be more healthy, to allow you to fight infection. In the nucleolus, when the DNA passes through the light, there's an activation. Sure. And then the frequency changes. And it's like a, it's just, it's a catalyst. The entire body now is at this different frequency. And many things are happening now in your body that you're not used to. You know, your hearing improves, your sight improves your sense of smell, you know, you, we lose about 1% of our sense of smell every year as we get older, uh, which really affects our taste. You know, if you can't smell, you can't taste. So all these things are enhanced. Are we talking about technology like that that will continue to get better and better and better? Right, see, they're using this on the surface of the skin. And, you know, what happens if you put that light inside the body? So that's what they're doing. They're allowing the blood to go, you know, through this. And even in the projects, there Jeez. were special light rooms where you just go in this room, you sit down very comfortable in these nice chairs, kind of like recliners you see in the dentist, and you go through this series of light therapy. You have to wear special goggles because the light is very, very bright. It looks like all white light, even through the goggles that are tinted but it's not, it's a color spectrum of light, but it's so bright of that color that it permeates your entire body. So it doesn't give you a suntan or anything like that, but it somehow allows it to affect the blood below your skin. It energizes it somehow. Yes, and the, the light is so bright, it actually passes a little bit through the dermis and into the bloodstream. There is a gland in the body called the pineal gland. Is there anything technologically that could stimulate it to do what it does? In the projects, um, working a lot with this pineal gland, they have a harmonic type of device that they can um, a basically attach to it through your sinus cavity. And it does a very quick, low frequency, vibratory harmonic tonality. And it somehow breaks up the calcium and the minerals that have been collecting there almost Every human being, almost every human being, has a calcified uh, pineal gland, so you know. The but power. there are devices like that um, that are out there that they have used in the projects to help stimulate this. And it's just a matter of time before you'll be able just to put something here and then allow that frequency to go in to clear that up. And it'll be like, you know, breathing again after not breathing your whole life. Is there anything technically that would enhance telepathic communication with us? Well, that's part of the pineal gland too. You know, it's, it's an eye of not just seeing, but it's also uh, activating different parts of the brain. Sometimes the brain wants to use that gland for things, but it can't because it's blocked. Can so you enhance it, it? Right, so it's a short circuit. So this would enhance that, correct. This device would actually enhance the ability for the brain and the pineal gland to work together. Stenosis of the spine is horrible for a lot of people. What does the future hold for something like that? Well, there's a, a, a doctor named Dr. Scuderi who invented the alpha-2 macroglobulin concentrator, uh, which I've used many times, and I think it's a fantastic adjunct to stem cells and platelet-rich plasma. It's a protease inhibitor. It's a protein that's only in your plasma, and he was able to extract this protein. And they're using it now for arthritis by injecting it into the facets and into the back to decrease the inflammation so the body can heal itself. There's a side effect that's going to be coming out that they did a, a study on with A2M 
And we've been able to regenerate pretty much anything in the body for a very long time. That's today, but what about but, tomorrow? But, but we've never been able to anti-age. That's where I'm going. So this protein has shown significant, amazing capabilities to actually anti-age uh, tenocytes and cells. So what that means for us in the future is you, we might not be uh, lifting you know, our hands to get aspirin or Motrin anymore for our inflammation, for the pain in our heads. We'll be grabbing this alpha-2 macroglobulin protein that's um, already vitally available in your body. But they're making a synthetic recombinant protein to this uh, so they can uh, distribute it, of course. And you might, you, you never know, you might be going in to get a H2M uh, infusion, which is gonna set you back 10 years. See, I think technology is amazing. Even now, you go to your dentist and he gives you a filling. They put a light on the filling to make it harden quicker. It doesn't burn your mouth. It's not hot. It's not cold. It's nothing. It just somehow solidifies the material. Is this ET a, technology? Yes, what is it is. This? It's reversed ET chemical technology. And we were using this in the projects with the super soldier programs if one would break their femur. You know, we could wrap this type of cement putty around them and then activate and then it with, with electricity. And now it's completely sealed and completely ready yeah. to actually bear the same amount of weight or more. It increased bone density. So these things are out there that are not allowed uh, into the civilian uh, arms yet. But you're absolutely correct. It's slowly trickling out. What does the future hold? for this kind of technology? Is it gonna get better for us? Or is it gonna be used for military purposes? What's gonna happen for it? Most amazing devices developed in the military and developed in the compartmentalized labs usually takes a few years to a few decades to be sold to a, a, a regular civilian corporation for it to be distributed. And marketed. And marketed. But it, this has happened, and all the stuff that you see today is actually stuff that, of course, the government and the compartmentalized projects and corporations have been using for decades. But, you know, so think what they got today, George. If, if we're already getting this really cool stuff right now, you know, released this year, but we're still like 20, 30 years behind. You know, it's kind of like when they build these stealth fighters. You don't really hear about it till. But that's exciting for know. the future. Is it, it is, because we're going to be. I can't wait. I can't wait because I don't, you know, I don't want to have to go to the hospital if I don't have to. You know, if I could do this at home and, 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 and do it cost effectively right. so everyone has one and of these devices. And it works. And it works. It's proven to work. Remember the Star Trek shows where Bones, who was a doctor, of course, used a device that he waved over people that were on the ship and they got cured. That was an incredible device that Bones used, wasn't it? Yes, and it wasn't uh, too far-fetched. There's a, a similar device that we have out now by LET Medical called the Skinar device. It's a new type of frequency healing. And the device you know, can send in these frequencies in the body, and it can actually help reprogram you know, the nerves and reprogram the voltage of things that are wrong in your body, such as if you had a headache and you put this you know, on your body. It knows and sends a frequency through your whole body and says, oh, well, this is not aligned up right here. This is a tension headache. And it can send a frequency in to relax that muscle. So there's technologies out there today that have been out for a while. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's interesting because it's been illegal in the United States of America forever. Uh, but yet, a lot of the astronauts um, in Russia, and overseas have been, you know, standard issue to have one of these oh, with you. Oh, they swear by it. So, you know, you take this up with you when you're at the space station. It's on every, um, you know, space shuttle mission and, and things like that. So they recently just got uh, the authorization now, I think, in Canada. A long time ago, if you were to order one of these into the United States of America, they would confiscate it and change out the circuit you're board. Kidding. So it would just be a TENS unit. Ha! Huh. And then, you know, so... This which, which gives you a pulsating electrical it's just a pulse, yeah, It's, it's just, good for your sore back or right, something like that. Exactly. And so it's sad that this was happening, but this thing can actually uh, help cure diseases and help cure ailments and things like that. What I'm saying is that technology is here, and there's more technology coming out. Emory, with a faith healer, they use energy that they grab from the universe. It goes through their body and they project it into the individual they want to heal. Does this device work like a faith healer? 
Well, no, it doesn't, I don't believe it amplifies your own energy, but I, I do believe it helps regulate the voltage in your body using frequencies so your body can actually heal itself. It's all these bombardments of these lights and EMF fields and all the foods we eat. And of course, the radiation from the sun that ages us, destroys our cells and you know things like that. So it's, it's important to know that the body is really good at regenerating itself if it's at a nice homeostasis uh, well-being. You know, if it's at this neutral state, it can do amazing things and heal itself. But your body's always fighting yeah. all day long. You're fighting the viruses you picked up on the plane. You're fighting uh, the bombardment of radiation and EMF fields. It throws off the frequency of the DNA. Faith healers are using their own energy, their frequency, and yes, pulling in energy from around them. Our DNA is a crystalline structure which is full of frequency and energy. So we're always emanating energy. Some energy levels are high in our body, some are low. Maybe this organ has a low energy, and maybe this organ has a high energy. Mm -hmm. But it has to be at a certain voltage of energy and frequency for it to operate efficiently. What does the Skinner device look like? The Skinner device looks like what Bones had. It kind of looks like a small iPhone. Ah. And it's a little thicker than that, and it has usually three uh, little metal prongs on the bottom end of it. Okay. And they're very expensive, $8,000 to $15,000. No, that much? Yes. And there's courses now that they're giving here in the United States and Canada for people to learn these. So I, I think it's, it's a very important piece of survival equipment for anyone to have because we also need to start treating ourselves. We need to be the physicians of our own body. Do we you? We can't have a regulation of big pharma telling us, well, these are, or the American Medical Association programming physicians, well, step one, this, step two, that. If this doesn't happen, now you do step three. Do you just wave it over the person or they physically have to be in contact? Right. You physically just run it down the body, on the skin gently, so it is touching the body. It has to measure the current of the body. So it's picking up the frequency and the voltage of the body. A lot of people believe that there's suppressed technology out there, that governments are holding back from letting us know it's out there. Well, that's a good example like of ozone therapy. It's been proven you know, to highly oxygenate the body and kill cancers and things like this. And the FDA would not approve that. It's just recently that a, a, a few states now are approved for that, but it took you know, 20 years for that to happen. Same thing with stem cells and platelet-rich plasma. I sure. had the same problem when I came out with my patents. You know, the problem was I was going about it the wrong way. I was saying, well, was, I'm treating this and helping cure that and trying to get an approval. You can't do that. You have to just say, well, this thing concentrates cells and give it to the physician and say, well, this may or may not help you. You know, you can try it out, let me know and then they come back with all these side effects. Well, it healed the wound twice as fast. Did you know that? No, I didn't, but can you do a white paper for me and let me know? Uh -huh. ah. As a device manufacturer, you have to be really careful when you come up with these amazing ideas because you have to go about it and register it a very certain way or the FDA will just shut it down. Emery, thanks for being on Cosmic Disclosure. Amazing material. Thanks, George, for having me. This is Cosmic Disclosure with our guest, Emery Smith. Thanks for watching. Coming this season on Cosmic Disclosure, where people share their clandestine involvement with government agencies, the military, and secret space programs. They are, you know, finding new things all the time, new portals that are, like you said, you know, sometimes they just open up. We don't know why. Maybe someone opened them up. And that I personally helped, uh, unknowns to me, the enslavement of at least three planets. Truth hurts and truth is change and uh and all evolution occurs through stress right so we have to go through that in order to get to this this other elevated level of consciousness so it's just another step towards truth and positivity for the world